glory for all you've brought me through and now I'm ready for whatever you want to do I'm moving forward to follow after you and now I'm ready for whatever Hope on things above. And in you, Jesus, the best is yet to come. Oh, your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your Welcome to Prairie Lakes Church. I'm Cody, the digital pastor here. And before anything else, we need you to hear that we are a no matter church. And what that means is no matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done, or even what's been done to you, we need you to hear God loves you. And you can go on the journey. You can look for him here with us. You don't have to clean yourself up first. Uh, you don't have to be perfect. Uh, we are really glad that you're here. 
So if you're new or even newer and you haven't taken that step of becoming known, I would love to connect with you and hear your story and send you an Amazon gift card just as a thank you for taking that bold step here today. So to do that, all you have to do is text PLC to 99581 and fill out our welcome card. It'll take you about 30 seconds and I would love to connect with you. And the next step that we take is connecting relationally. And today, talking about that in the context of small groups. When you join a small group, you build community, you build friendships that have your back, and you have theirs. You have friends that are praying for you throughout the week with the ups and downs of life. So if you want to learn more about joining a group, uh, no matter where you're at geographically, I would love to connect with you and help you take that step. So again, you can text PLC to 99581. Click that I want to take a next step and connect relationally, and I would love to help you take that. And the next step that we talk about every week is giving generously. And I just want to thank you all who have given so generously to Prairie Lakes Church and uh, to our online campus that have made our ministry possible. Uh, so it's just cool to look back and see God's work, the fruit through our online campus and Prairie Lakes Church as a whole. So thank you for your generosity. And if you want to give to Prairie Lakes Church right now, you can do that at prairielakes.org forward slash give. And you can select your campus from the drop down. We're going to continue in our Here's the Mic series, and we have a special guest here with Pastor John, so let's kick to today's message. Hey, uh, Prairie Lakes, I am here with my friend Phil Adam. And uh, Phil agreed to do this with us, so I'm really thankful for that. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so, uh, Phil, you live in Cedar Falls. What do I you do? do? I do. Uh, so, I am the uh, general manager of a local bar downtown called uh, Uncle Harry's Five and Dime Tavern. Okay. And this is a business you've been in a long time. Yeah. Uh, I've been in the service industry for approximately 20 years now. Uh, Harry's, we've been open nine years. Okay. So, I've been there since day one. Wow. Okay. Give us a little background on, on, on you. You're an Iowa boy. Mm -hmm. So where'd you grow up and what was it like? I grew up in a rural community in Southeast Iowa, uh, farming community, you know, very small. Um, went to a small little high school called Pekin. Pekin. Pekin Packwood. Pekin Packwood. What was the mascot? Uh, Panthers. The Panthers. That's right. So, no, just, I mean, I only had, my hometown probably only has 500 people in it. You wow. Know? Yeah. So, so real small Iowa town. Real yeah. town. And you grew up on a pretty significant farm though. Pretty uh, good, big farming operation. Yeah. My parents are uh, hog farmers down there. So they, there was always a short, never a shortage of work. <laughs> <laughs> so were you a, uh, a farm kid that really had to work on the farm? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, like everyone else, they would talk about what they, you know, you know, we'd come back from Christmas vacation and everyone's like, Oh, I went sledding, blah, 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 and that. What'd you do? I'm like... I ran a pressure washer for 14 hours a day for uh, eight days straight. There you go. Good. <laughs> and they just kind of look at me and I'd be like, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you were a real farm boy. Yeah. You're a real farm boy. Okay. So uh, growing up, uh, family, what was it like? Mom, dad, and siblings. Yep. Uh, three older siblings that were significantly older than me. Um, I basically grew up kind of like an only child almost because okay. my, my, my closest sibling is 12. 12 years older than okay. me. Okay, there was a little gap there. Yeah, so I, mean, I barely even remember my siblings being at home. Okay. You know, I always remember them being in college for yeah. the most part. <laughs> yeah, and you guys, um, along with your family, you you also had, though, like workers that worked lived on your farm too, right? That yeah, my parents, with... my parents, if they can if they can retain them at any given time, have yeah. four to six full-time employees. Wow, so it's a pretty big operation. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. there's never a shortage of work. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So, so Phil, when you were uh, growing up uh, in your home, pretty healthy home. Yeah. Looking back, you know, we all, all of us are, you know, dysfunctional to a degree, right? But of course. Looking back, pretty healthy. Yeah. Pretty good home. Yeah. And, and you, know, you know, my very, you know, parents are very good, salt of the earth and good natured people. I mean, my dad was school board president for mm. more years than I, as many years as I was pro probably been alive. You know, he was right. school board president when all my older s siblings were going through school, when I was in school. Stuck around when my niece, some of my nieces and nephews were through school. <laughs> like, wow. he, I think my dad was school board president for 42 or three years or something like wow. that. You know, just good salt of the earth, yeah. respected, nice people. Yeah. And commitment to your community and, yeah. you know, all the good Iowa stuff. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Um, growing up spiritually or religiously, what, what, what was it like? What were you guys? So I grew up in the Catholic church. Okay. Uh, my 
my parents are you know pretty devout catholics you know that's that's how they're raised you know small uh, farming catholic community in, in southeast iowa that's how my grandparents were you know they're my great grandparents you know yeah. my great grandparents and grandparents were actually some of the founding founders of what was my like my original like grown church we attended growing up really yeah they were on like the wow. board for the creation and building of it okay <laughs> wow so, so really kind of a deep family catholic family connection yeah really kind of deep like that and were you guys active oh Would yeah you go and absolutely every every saturday night <laughs> Saturday night mass man that's right because we couldn't go on sunday morning because we had mom and dad we had to get up a chore oh, oh, that's <laughs> in right. the morning so it was always saturday night yeah <laughs> so in, until i turned 16 and could, i got my driver's license and i yeah. could get up and go on sunday morning <laughs> it was had to be everything i did on saturday night had to get planned to be about after 6 30. there you go yeah <laughs> so, so 5 30 mass literally it was religious i mean yeah. you were you were there okay mm -hmm. so when, when you were in your home, was uh, you guys talk about God a lot or pray and all that, or was it more of a just a church thing? Um, mainly a church thing. I mean, we'd always say grace before a meal, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. But there wasn't a lot of deep philosophical conversation about, you know, belief of religious belief sure. and you know meaning of life kind of stuff right yeah yeah more more private yeah religion is a little more personal rather than yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's, that's not unusual for Iowans either so so um at, at some point you uh kind of pushed away from the church um when, when was that uh, I would say that probably started somewhere around 17 okay I mean I mean it was when it was every you know growing up that's the last thing you want to do every Saturday night. Is, yeah. You know, you want to go have fun with your friends, go see Tim Hadley or whoever <laughs> down the road. And there you go. So every, uh, I would say it probably started somewhere, you know, around that age. And, you know, and not only, not only was it every Saturday night, I was an altar boy until I was oh. 16 also. So every Saturday night I was up there serving mass, you know, from the time I was probably 12 on, actually maybe even sooner than that, maybe 10 on wow you know so there was just there's a lot of r regimented structure and things that were expected of me as far as you know we're going to church while you're serving mass you know mom and dad would you know they would be uh the eucharistic ministers and okay. stuff like that okay. you know so yeah so it was it was you're gonna go we're gonna go this is what we do yeah but then you get you're 17 or whatever and you can kind of make your own decision then well you know it's you well you do what most teenagers do is they have some sort of rebellious yeah. instincts that come out. You know, that was my rebellious instinct. You know, yeah. I was like, I, I don't, I've been made to do this my whole life. I don't want to do this right now. <laughs> yeah, right, so. right. So right now, um, when it comes to church or religion or God, what would you kind of consider yourself? What would you, you see, I'm Catholic, I'm Christian, I'm, I'm how would you describe your kind of spiritual life right now? I mean, if people kind of, because every once in a while that question will be asked of me, you know, um, I always say, you know, I, I was born and raised Catholic, mm -hmm. um, but I'm just non-practicing yeah. currently. Um, I don't, I believe that there's something out there yeah. for you. I just haven't figured out what that is for me personally yet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you're, you're, you're not alone in that. There's, yeah. there's God's out there somewhere. I'm not sure what, what he's like or what, what he does, but I, there's something out there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Middle of the road on that, you know. I'm just not sure where I'm at, yeah. but I'm, but I'm, I don't, you know, disbelieve, but I don't believe. I'm not. Just haven't found my my calling, so to speak. Yeah. You know, of yeah. what what's going to drive me in my my faith based decisions. Yeah, and I think that's a little bit, Phil. Our, you know, our our friendship. One of the mm -hmm. reasons I like you is. <laughs> you're, there's some authenticity to you. You're not trying to pretend you're something you're not, but you're not. You know you. When I show up at your establishment, you don't go, oh, the pastor's here. You did, you know, yeah. we, we were, we became friends, you know, uh, and yeah. that's one of the things I, I like about you. Let's go back to high school now a little bit. Okay. So sure. you're in high school. Uh, what kind of kid are you? Uh, the jock. Okay. You're an athlete. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I, I grew up with a pretty amazing group of people, you know, there a lot of really wholesome at, you know, good, solid individuals. I'm, you know, we'd go out when my friend, we'd go out, you know, I grew up with, there was 56 people in my entire graduating class mm -hmm. from high school. So obviously not a lot, you know, we'd go out, there would be 20 of us that would be all out hanging out on the, every weekend night, yeah. you know, and we're still to this day, we all keep in touch, you wow. know, we're 20 plus years later. Yeah. That's so, pretty cool. Yeah. So you're an athlete. So you kind of would have been the jock group, right? Yeah. If there was one. Um, did you stay out of trouble for the most part? Yeah. I've never been arrested, John. Come on. 
<laughs> well, I wasn't really going the, the prison route here, but <laughs> I mean, you have to create your own fun in Southeast Iowa sometimes a little yeah. bit. But no, I wasn't. I wasn't exactly a saint, but I definitely wasn't. Yeah, you weren't a complete knucklehead. No. Okay, no, that's good to know. All right. So you get out of high school. What happens then? What do you, what do, you do? I uh, came to you and I. Okay. So that's your Cedar Falls connection. Yep. Okay. That's what brought me to Cedar Falls. Okay. And and how was you and I for you? It was good. I, I enjoyed my time at you and I. Um, if I hadn't got hooked into the wonderful industry that I work in currently, I probably uh, would have left Cedar Falls. But right. yeah, I got into this industry and I'm a glutton for punishment. So here I am. Yeah, dude, yeah you're in a tough business right now. All right. So um, Phil, let's talk about this this thing called the church. Okay. Mm -hmm. You you don't attend church. You don't attend Prairie Lakes, you know, which is a real problem. Let's start with that, okay? <laughs> you've been trying. You've been trying. You're, you've, been, you've been recruiting me. I've been recruiting hard on you for a while. But what keeps you away, Phil? What keeps you away from uh, this thing called the church? Like I touched on before, I just don't think I've found a place for it in my life yet. Yeah. You know, like I haven't found that calling that's pulled me to have to make a decision on where my faith is and what I need mm -hmm. from like a spiritual aspect yet. Yeah. You know, sometimes people, you know, had to have a traumatic um, illness or a, you know, they suffer a terrible loss or something and that, you know, that, you know, that that's like the calling that they need that inspires them right. to find that, you know, faith based decision. And I, I just don't think I've really come across yeah. that calling yet. Yeah. You haven't found yourself in a, I mean, you haven't had an easy life, but you haven't found yourself at the, the bottom of the barrel yeah. going, I'm, I, I don't even know what to do. I'm, yeah. I'm lost. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that would kind of be your, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Was there anything that, was there anything that happened negatively with the church that made you kind of just go, eh? um, there was one thing when I was, I was probably in that 12 to 14 age range. Our church had a very charismatic uh, pastor. He was just, you know, very inspirational. Everybody loved him, lots yeah. of charisma. And it turned out, it came to light that he'd been embezzling bunches and bunches and bunches of money from the church. Uh -huh. And obviously he was no longer with our our church anymore you know yeah. but like he was you know he was related very well to me you know as a young you know preteen I guess or whatever you call sure. him now yeah and you know so that kind of stung a little bit like you know I'd kind of put my trust in him a little bit you know as a person even on a personal mm -hmm. level let alone as a you know religious level or pastor you know and it's kind of like really he did that <laughs> you know yeah. like that kind of stung a little bit I mean it didn't I wouldn't say that that was like a defining moment, but it was something that, you know, left a negative impression with me. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, we, we talk about this a lot. There's a lot of what we would call church hurt hmm. and you know, people have been hurt by the church or let down by a pastor or let mm -hmm. down by an organization. Yeah. We, there's a lot of that out there. Do you, do you get into those kind of conversations at Harry's? Do you have those conversations with people? I, mean, I know you're busy a lot but. well you know you know there are there's rules about things you don't talk about okay. in a bar John. okay good what is it <laughs> religion and politics okay <laughs> yeah it never it never works out that way it's almost a guarantee and especially in today's uh yeah. state of affairs somebody's going to talk about one of those two so, yeah. at some point but yeah I'm, i don't really uh i haven't really encountered much of you know like the religious like let down type of conversation okay, okay. so okay are, are there conversations about like church or Christianity or God that, that kind of come up. I know um, we, we have a Bible study there, so <laughs> there's a little bit of that going on. But every once in a while, it's um, it just depends on the crowd and the people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like anything else. There's so many variables that come into play when you put groups of people together. Yeah. You know, yeah. conversations can, they vary a lot. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. Do you, do you feel like you're a, a a pastor sometimes to people and then some yeah, yeah. pastor guidance counselor therapist uh <laughs> yeah. really parent it's, it's, <laughs> actually you, you you have a lot of it's actually a pretty good place for uh to help people yeah it really is that's pretty cool and you've got the right feel one of the things i like about you and your personality is you make everybody feel welcome and you're easy to talk to and i think that really plays well for you we've got a pastor opening if you'd like to uh <laughs> what's what's why well, you know i'm always looking to make more money John. Yeah, what's, the, what's the what's the pay well, let's uh <laughs> not sure we can hit that so <laughs> so um phil right right now when i say the word 
church. And, mm-hmm. you know, and I'll, I've invited you to, you know, different mm-hmm. times. And I try to, I, obviously, I don't do it in the way that's offensive, I, I hope. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but but when you when you hear the word church, kind of what, what comes into your mind when you hear church? When, when I say, hey, come to church sometime or come to this service. What, what comes to your mind or you hear people talking? What, what church, what's that mean? What's it mean or what do I envision? What do you think? What do you think? Yeah, what, well, I mean, what comes like, to you? Like instantly when some, you know, if the first mental image that pops mm-hmm. into my head is, you know, the church churches I attended growing up, like just the mental image of the altar and yeah. the crucifix and, you know, yeah. like that's the first thing that pops into my head. Yeah. And then, beyond, you know, if you start want to take it a step farther, you know, I start, okay, I want to talk about church. Well, you know, it's well, a place of belonging and like, how do I say this? Soul searching, so to speak, sure, yeah, yeah. you know, like um, soul care. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. Uh, a place of purpose for okay. people, you know, okay. so, you know, sometimes people need a place, need a purpose, a calling, that, that calling that I keep referencing, you know? Yeah. yeah. So you don't have necessarily like a real negative picture. I mean, you had that one experience that wasn't so great. Yeah. But, but that, you don't have like this, oh, the church sucks or, you know, you no. don't, you don't really have that. No. And they're all hypocrites or anything not at like all. that. You don't, that's not really your experience. No. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, as you think kind of your, kind of your, uh, employees or your friend group and you know you have and you have a wide friend group you do rag bry, you snowmobile in the winter and and obviously when you're a when you're when a run a bar in a town like Cedar Falls you're gonna have a lot of people that know you mm-hmm. as you as you think about that circle um, could you put any uh, um, same question what would they think about the church do you ever do you, you get any feel for that I would say that's a tough question, John. Um, <laughs> um, I don't really think that I generally have had many of those conversations okay. with people I've encountered within, like my I'm called my friend group. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, some I know. I mean, some people that are my friends, they're not close acquaintances. You know, they're extended friends. You know, yeah. you have your inner circle of friends. Yeah, Well, that you know of, you know, your inner circle of friends that, you know, you know everything about and they know everything about you. Yeah. And then you have like that next tier of people that, you know, you know a little bit of their story or whatever. And then, you know, have people that you know their first names, mm-hmm. kind of what they do. And, you know, you can joke with them. Yeah. But, you, you know, it's not like you have their phone number. Right. <laughs> There's that tier, you know. Right. So it just depends on your relationship with somebody to the amount of depth you want to go to as far as you know, conversations and what you know about them and what they know about you and yeah. everything. So my, I mean, my good, the people that are in that, you know, the close circle, I mean, obviously I know, you know, if they're, you know, if they're religious or, you know, if they you know go to church every weekend or, you know, right. whatever. Right. Do you, do you have many people in your kind of what you'd call your, your inner circle of friends that are what you would call Christians or religious or is there many in there like that? Yeah. Okay. And that's not an issue. No. They're weird for any, in any way. Not for me. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it is for them that I, I'm not religious. Has there, there ever been uh, people who are Christians that have invited you or have you ever had any awkward encounters with church people or Christians? Not really, actually. Not that, really? Not that come to mind anyway. Okay. Okay. So in, in all of your, think back all the way like maybe to high school until now, have you been invited very often to church or to an event or something that would be Christian? Have you been invited? Have, have people tried to, other than me, <laughs> tried to get their arm around you? Or have you been invited to a lot of things? Like in high school, did you have FCA? When you were at you and I, did you go to any Christian things? Um, um, I went once, just whatever the thing that you used to have at, uh, <laughs> used to have at the union at you and I. Basic. Ba- is that what uh, was that what it was called? I don't know. I, I just I remember. I always remember it was on Thursday nights. Yeah, I think it was Union. basic. Or used to, uh, yeah, okay. I mean, yep. that was, we I gotta, gotcha. we gotta, we're, we're, I'm going to date myself here a little bit. We're talking like 2001 <laughs> here. Oh so. man, ancient Phil, ancient. <laughs> but yeah, I, I attended that once just out of curiosity. Okay, to see so what it was you all were about. Freshman, sophomore, what, what year? I've been a sophomore then. Been a sophomore. Did somebody invite you? No. I just, so you, I just knew it. You knew it, about it, it. Knew it existed, and I just okay. Went, just went one time just to see what it was about. Okay, and, and what was your impression? Honest. I <laughs> a little confused. I really wasn't sure what was all transpiring. <laughs> okay. You know, I wasn't sure what what was the message exactly. Okay. Like I felt like the message was kind of muddled. Okay. So it didn't really resonate with me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you you put yourself in that spot at least once. Yeah. And, and it wasn't like, 
oh my gosh, I got to come back to this. It was yeah. more a little more confusion, a little yeah. more, I'm not sure what they're doing. Yeah, I'm not sure what the point of this all is right now. Okay, you know. okay, interesting. And did you go alone or did you go with some people? I went by myself. Okay, you really you were that guy that just showed up and said, I'm going to check this out. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Since then, uh, many invites? Not really. Huh. I mean, other than, you know, I get, still get the the traditional Catholic wedding or whatever, oh, yeah, stuff yeah. like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve mass with the family, stuff like that. Yeah, but. yeah. So you're a you're a guy that runs a, a, a tavern, a popular tavern tavern in, in Cedar Falls. You have hundreds of people that come through on a weekly, monthly, thousands, and a yearly. Right. So you're around lots of people, mm-hmm. a lot. And and in all of that, you're looking me in the eye and say nobody's really invited you into something. Well, I can't say nobody, John. Yeah, okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was, I just always find that fascinating. Yeah. You know, at Prairie Lakes, we, we talk about our little Iowas, right? Yeah. And just, I mean, you, I, we, you, you're planted in your little Iowa and, and go be Jesus with skin on. I mean, just be the friend and be a friend and and um, get them on your arm. We call, you know, get somebody on your arm. Mm-hmm. So, okay, yeah. I I'm, I'm always find that fascinating that you grew up in the heart of Iowa. You grew up in a, in a, in a, in a small community uh, you went to college at a at a state university, and now you've lived in Cedar Falls for twenty some twenty three years, okay, almost. And I've been twenty four, so we're about the same. You came in? Would you come ninety nine? Yeah. Okay, I, I came in ninety eight, and in all that time, you just haven't had more invites yeah. into something. Wow. Okay, that's to me that's very fascinating. Mm-hmm. It's very fascinating to me. Okay, so let me. Is that, let, me, let me follow that with this. So, um, in your opinion, you know, you know, mm-hmm. you're not the expert here. You're, you're a good Iowa boy, right? What What's wrong with the church? I mean, why isn't the place that you or a majority of your friends um, go to? What, what What's wrong with the church? I would say that. Hmm. Be real. Hit, 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 Be me, hit, me, hit me with a hard one here, John. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know if anybody that I really run with in my circle of friends or anything would say that there's anything that's negatively wrong. Like, you know, it's, I don't believe this. Like, there's no way, you know, there's no, mm-hmm. no, it's not like it's a, like a Darwinism conversation. Right. You, you know, yeah. um, I think it's just something that they are kind of like me where maybe it's just not been a place in their life. Mm-hmm. And they haven't, you know, they haven't really come to terms with what they're looking for on like a spiritual level. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so for for you and maybe just by proxy, your your mm-hmm. your friends, there's not a, a real negative view like, oh, the church is full of hypocrites, or the church no. just wants your money, or you know, there's there's not a lot of that. Not that I've encountered, no. Okay. So for you, it really is a, a, a more of a phase or season of life or just a kind of waiting for something to click or something to happen, yeah. kind of like that. You okay. know, everybody, you know, you got to find your, make your way through life and hopefully you find yeah. your place, you know, and yeah. when it comes to sort of spirituality, I haven't found my place. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's, let's turn it just a little bit. Um, Outside of like, uh, I don't want to call it a crisis, but like you, uh, uh, maybe a kind of a faith crisis. If you go, man, yeah. I really need to get this thing through. Outside of that, what would it take? What would it take for Phil to <laughs> to come on my arm? <laughs> I mean, what, what would it take? Because um, you, you, we're friends, yeah, and you know a lot of dudes that go to Prairie Lakes. You yeah. know a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, what would it take? Mm. I don't know what it would take, John. I'll be okay. honest. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. No, I appreciate that. I wish I, wish I wish I had an answer for you, but yeah. I don't. No, I think that, but that's kind of your theme is it's just, it's, it's, uh, for lack of a better word, it's kind of irrelevant to you right now. Yeah. I just, like I said, I haven't found a place for it in my life. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. That's interesting. Let, let's just move it just a little bit here. Um, um, when I say, uh, Jesus, um, what, what's your, What's your kind of picture of Jesus? What's your belief about Jesus? Testing your cat, testing your uh, catechism, or whatever. well, what do you want me to? You want me to recite off all the, <laughs> no, you know, the, no, the history no, I was I taught? Or? Want, I know that you know it in your head. I know because you're a smart guy. But when I say, you know, hey, you got to, we would we would say step over the faith line and trust Jesus. Mm-hmm. What would that? What would that? Uh, what's that? When I say that to you, what's that? 
sound like? What, what do you think of Jesus when I say that? I mean, I think it's, you know, it's that, it's not so much, it's what he represents okay. to me, you know, like that the, the, the idea or the, you know, the, if it, you know, if, if it was a legitimate actual person, you know, right. the, but the concept of, you know, the fact that somebody that was selfless and was willing to, you know, th- sacrifice himself for the betterment of, you know, someone else or, you know, right. you know, just didn't harbor any of the, the negativity or, you know, no matter what, like you're, you do or who you are or what you've done, you know, he still accepts you for who you are. And, you know, it's that, that, that concept, that thought mm-hmm. process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. So this, you, you have this kind of picture of Jesus as, as this substitutionary sacrifice for people and, and yeah. okay, very good. All right. Um, uh, here's one, here's another one for you that his morale is going to go, ah, oh, man, you shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's it take to get to heaven? Doing righteous deeds you know treat okay. others how you want to be treated okay don't be my esmeralda would laugh at this because i have it's a term i use a lot of, it's you know it's pe- some people you you encounter throughout you know your day-to-day life you know i you they leave an impression with you i and sometimes it's in a negative way i always refer to them as garbage people yeah and esmeralda just laughed the first time she's like what's what's that mean i'm like if that person's a garbage person you know there's there's people out there that'll they'll throw their their trash in the neighbor's yard you know yeah. like just something simple like that you yeah. know don't be a garbage person you yeah. know be nice to people treat other you know treat other people how you'd want to be treated the golden rule man yeah <laughs> yeah so so for you the the kind of the ticket to heaven is be a good person treat others way you want to be treated golden rule don't be, yeah. don't be a garbage person yeah and and okay very good um and and what about um this 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 idea, Phil, of you, you, you've, uh, I'm assuming you've heard this before, like uh, a moment in your life when you, what we, what we call at Prairie Lakes, calling step over the faith line. We, mm-hmm. we, we would say there comes this moment when you just go, I, I can't do it. I, I can't earn my way in. I can't be good enough. I, there's something wrong. I'm sick of myself. Um, and it's not self-help, but it really is kind of a surrender to Jesus. So an old term years ago would have been born again. Mm-hmm. Um, say yes to Jesus. We say step over the faith line and, you know, let him have you. When I say that, what does that, what does that do for you? What's that, what's that stir up or anything in you? Well, I mean, like when you, when you say that it, I envision, you know, somebody that's willing to become, basically get, become vulnerable, you know, open themselves up to believing in something that they don't necessarily know right. about, you know, just putting their faith all into something that, they might not have a clue about, you know, they just, because of where they're at, you know, in their life or whatever, you know, like they, they're willing to take that leap. Yeah. Yeah. You know? You'll it takes some faith, mm-hmm. right? It takes some faith, the faith in, and what we would say, faith in someone, the name of Jesus, the person yeah. of Jesus that we'd, we'd say, yeah, absolutely. But you would say that as, wow, that's, that's quite a step to be that vulnerable. Well, I mean, if you think about it, like even if, if you're, you say you you know you hit just hypothetically you're at rock bottom you know i need i need you know save me you know looking for salvation yeah. you know like you're yeah. putting faith in god that he'll you know that's what's going to happen you know you're going to find salvation in your belief and your acts and everything yep. and that's nothing wrong with that i'm just saying like it, i feel like that's making somebody making themselves vulnerable yeah you know like it's you're opening yourself up yeah you, know? really you do the is. same thing to like in like a marriage you know you make yourself mm-hmm. vulnerable because you're willing to put your faith and trust in your partner or you know something yeah it's yeah. there's a certain level of vulnerability that comes with yeah, that absolutely when it comes to uh are you open phil to spiritual conversations of course yeah that that's not it wouldn't be super weird i mean the context always matters right but you should, as an, an adult, you should be able to have an objective conversation. Yeah, you know? yeah. So that wouldn't that doesn't push you away. You no. wouldn't go. Okay. Um, are you open to? Uh, let, let's say, for instance, uh, we do our Bible study mm-hmm. at your place, um, and I said, Phil, well, you you should come. You should you should do this with us. And you know, we we take a passage and we talk about it, and we talk about what Jesus is up to in our life. We talk about faith and. Would, would 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 you be open to something like that? I'm not sure. inviting you because I don't know if I want to invite you to it or not. You know, but, <laughs> yeah. but you know that wouldn't be like totally weird for you. You're not, not you're not like opposed. Not at all. Ah, I'd okay. sit down at the table with you and the boys and have a conversation. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's good. And I think I think a lot of times we have we have people in our lives who 
who maybe aren't churchgoers, right? Mm-hmm. Or aren't, you know, or, or, or like you are kind of going, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I believe. I'm not sure what, what it is. And we have a tendency to kind of say no for them. Like, oh, he mm-hmm. would never, he would never do it, you know? And so we say no. But you, you have just said to me, yeah, I'd be, I'd be, open. I'm an adult. I'd be open to that. Yeah. Okay. That, that's, that's good. That's interesting. Uh, Phil, was there ever a time in your life um, from kid on, or maybe let's, let's talk maybe more adulthood. Mm-hmm. Uh, was there ever a time when you felt God that you, you're, you know, you're out snowmobiling and the stars are out and you stop and you just go, Oh my gosh. Um, I've definitely had that, you know, that, that sensation or that feeling of, you know, awe and wonderment, you yeah. know, where you're standing there, you just, you just stop and you take everything in, you know, and you know, if God created it, then that's what I'm feeling then. But I don't, I just don't know if that's what I'm feeling, you know? Okay. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, definitely that, that stop that, you know, where he just stops you in your tracks and you just, you know, take everything in. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. One of my, one of my contentions is that every one of us, every one of us, is, we would, we would say, you know, created by God and God's got a, God's always calling us. God wants us to be his. And I have this contention that, you know, like, no matter, right? No matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done, what's been done to you, he loves you. And there are just every one of us, even the hardest of us has those moments, mm-hmm. whether it's the middle of the night when you wake up and it's just something that it's either a, a kind of a depth or a emptiness in our soul, or it's an openness to, oh, wow, I feel very small mm-hmm. in this giant creation. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Okay. Very good. There's other people out there that that are in your same shoes lots, mm-hmm. lots of iowans what what i would say we kind of character characterizes this film uh good iowan you know believes in god and stuff but yeah doesn't really have it narrowed down and and yeah. it's, it's you know, you're try, trying to be a good person you know a good, a good iowan um what would you say to the people of prairie lakes what would you say about um uh, how to how to kind of interact with with guys like you? What what would you say to us? I'd say treat them just like how you would want to be treated. You know, you John, when you know you walked up to me and when you and I started becoming better friends, you just treated me like a regular person. You know, yeah. you know, you feel free to have conversations with them about you know what they like, get to know them. You know, and then see if there's a place for them at Prairie Lakes if if that's a com- thing conversation they're open to. Okay. Yeah, so you would you would just say be be normal. Yeah, just don't be a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, just if you want to be friends with them, be friends with be them friends. and then then take it from there. Yeah. <laughs> if you yeah. don't if you find out you don't want to be friends with them, then distance yourself and don't want <laughs> don't maybe don't bring them into the fold. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, Phil, I want to say thanks. Absolutely. And uh, you you you're I, I value our our friendship. I, I value do I. the fact that we can do this and I know that um, you did this because of our friendship and it's not your it wouldn't be your first choice to come and be on this yeah. <laughs> across Iowa and thousands of people across Iowa but I want to say thanks I'm, I'm, you're welcome and I'm glad you didn't preface with that the whole thousands of people across Iowa thing because that would have made me even more nervous <laughs> and let me add it around the United States and parts of the world okay <laughs> alright thanks buddy you bet John All right. thanks guys and one of my takeaways from that conversation was uh, just that Uh, People are open to our invites, but sometimes we say no for them, as Pastor John said. So this week, let's not say no for those in our little Iowa. Let's let's get after them. Let's be invitational here this week. But we're going to continue in our Here's the Mic series, and we want to ask the questions that you have. So if you have a question, we want to answer it. And to let us know what it is, you can text Mike to 99581. You can follow along on this Ask Me Anything journey on our Instagram page. And kids, uh, you are up next. Children's ministry is about ready to begin. So get ready for that. And everyone else will see you back next week.
Welcome to Kids Online. Tomorrow is Independence Day. Some call it the 4th of July. I am wearing all of my stuff to be ready for the holiday I forgot. Instead of wearing my Independence Day stuff, I am wearing my all gray outfit or grout fit. I know how to fix this. All right, it's been a while, so stick with me here. Let's see, ready? Wait a minute. This doesn't seem right. Let's try it again. I'm a bird again, but at least I'm a holiday, so we're getting closer. All right, let's try again, ready? Hot dog, literally hot dog. This isn't what I wanted. I think we're getting closer though, because did you know on the 4th of July that there's a guy named Joey Chestnut who last year ate 76 hot dogs in 10 minutes? That's crazy. All right, I think I got one more left in me here. Here we go. Yes, yes, we've done it. Oh, I'm so excited. How do I look? I look like America. Well, I hope you have the best 4th of July ever. We're gonna go ahead and jump into this week's videos and I'll see you next week. When was the last time you made a difference in this world? That sounds big, right? Like campaigning for class president. Or feeding every single hungry person in your town. Or running a marathon in support of ending cancer. Those are great things, big things. But the truth is, you don't have to do big things to make a difference. No person is an island. Well, not quite like that. It means that all of us, every single kid and grown up in this world, are connected. Everything you do, no matter how small, can affect someone else. You made a difference to your family this morning just by waking up. Good morning. Since you're going to make a difference no matter what you do, choose to make a difference for good. You make a difference for good when you say thanks to your mom for making your lunch when you let another kid get in line ahead of you, when you get on FaceTime with Grandma instead of playing just one more video game. Hey, Grandma. Even the smallest action in your day can make a big difference. It's like dropping a tiny pebble in a lake. The ripples can travel further than you could ever imagine. When you let God be all you need in every breath, the power of God's Spirit can truly help you make waves. Then others will see God at work in you. That's why making waves is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. All right, everybody. Clap your hands now. Let's make some waves together. Let's change the world. Come on. God, I'm so amazed by your goodness.
everybody, my name is Haley. Question for you, what do you like to do when it's summertime? Do you go on vacation or play in the sprinklers or fire hydrants? Do you stay inside all summer playing video games? One of my favorite things to do is go to the beach. It's the perfect place to make waves because what you do today can change the world around you. You meet so many different kinds of people when you're at the beach. Surfers. Gnarly. Cowabunga. Treasure hunters. <laughs> Woo! Hey, hey! Yeah! <gasps> A bottle cap from 2017. Tourists. Woo! At the beach, not only can you see literal waves being made, but you can make waves by showing things like goodness, gentleness, and especially kindness. In today's story, you'll hear one of Jesus' most famous parables about someone who showed kindness. And it wasn't someone you'd expect. So, you know, don't bail on me, jellies hang ten, and we can make the drop on a twin fin. Seaweed slushies, am I right? Um, wipe out a point break, uh, you know? <laughs> what, what, am I, what am I even saying? <laughs> Uh, later, <laughs> dudes, do dudettes. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. When Jesus traveled to a town, great crowds gathered to hear him teach. Fishermen and merchants, beggars and rich men, little children and important scholars. Many people listened with open minds and hearts, but a few just wanted to prove that they already had the answers. One day, a law expert stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, what must I do to receive eternal life? What is written in the law? How do you understand it? The law expert smirked. He can read off the answers perfectly. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. The crowd was likely impressed. Clearly this man's a well-studied scholar. You have answered correctly. Do that and you will live. The law expert couldn't quite leave it at that. He wanted to know just how little he can do and still look good. By neighbor, are we talking someone within 50 feet of my house? Across the street? Not down the block, surely. I mean, really, who is my neighbor? Jesus didn't give the law expert a dictionary definition of neighbor. In fact, he gave a more creative answer. Jesus told a story. If he told that same story today, it might sound something like this. One day, a man prepared to make a trip from Jerusalem down to Jericho. Hmm, no bus, no Uber. Looks like I'll be walking. The way was steep and rugged with many twists and huge rocks. That looks like a giant egg. And that one looks like a goat. That one looks like a an excellent hiding place for robbers. <laughs> Stick him up. Get his cash. Don't forget the new shoes. The robbers stripped the man of everything. They even beat him up. They left him on the side of the road, nearly dead. Help, help please. The hot sun beat down on the injured man. He was too weak to even crawl. But after what seemed like hours, he finally heard footsteps. A preacher was traveling down a narrow road, practicing his next sermon. Now you may ask, why do we need to raise money for a brand new church building with an indoor swimming pool and covered parking for the pastoral Tesla? To do the Lord's work, of course. When the preacher saw the engine man ahead, he quickly shifted to the other side of the road. Water, please. Ah, uh, not really my department. That's pastoral care. I'll send a memo. The preacher quickly went on his way, still polishing his sermon notes. As the sun got lower in the sky, the engine man started to lose hope. But once again, 
You heard footsteps. Help me. A church worship leader was hurrying along the road, singing along with the music in his earbuds. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. The worship leader glimpsed the wounded man ahead, but pretending he hadn't seen a thing, he trotted to the other side of the road and kept right on going. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. The wounded man was desperate. The sun began to set as another traveler came along. The man tried to lift his head. Perhaps he could see the approaching stranger. Oh no. The stranger was a man from a nearby region of Samaria, even though they shared the same ancestors. The Jews and the Samaritans hated and mistrusted each other for hundreds of years. But unlike the preacher and the worship leader, the Samaritan stopped when he saw the wounded man. Oh no. The Samaritan felt compassion for the injured man. He slid off his motorcycle and used his first aid kit to clean and bandage the man's wounds. Let's get you someplace safe. Carefully, the Samaritan laid the injured man across the back of his motorcycle. Easy now. You take, you take it slow. By the last light of the setting sun, the Samaritan brought the wounded man to an inn and made sure he had a good bed to sleep in for the night. The Samaritan found the innkeeper. Please take care of this man until he's all better. Here, here's my debit card, and if you have any extra expenses, I'll pay you back when I return. Murmurs of surprise rippled through the crowd as Jesus finished his unusual story. Jesus looked directly at the law expert. Which of the three do you think was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by robbers? The law expert's eyes dropped, mind racing, looking for a way out. But the answer was clear. The one who felt sorry for him. Go and do as he did. Through his story, Jesus was clear. Your neighbor is not only someone who lives near you or is like you. Your neighbor is anyone who needs your help and kindness. Showing kindness to someone can be easy, especially when that someone is a lot like you. But Jesus' parable reminds us that we should be kind to everyone, even people who are different. People who look different, act different, and think different than we do. Showing kindness means treating people the way you want to be treated. It can mean helping someone who seems lost. Okay, so you wanna take a right at the one and then a left on Dillon Beach Road. There are some great views of the sunset out there. You'll love it. Kindness can mean learning how to communicate in a new way. Okay, so hanging 10 is when I hang all 10 of my toes off of the surfboard. <laughs> that is so totally rad. <laughs> Did I say that right? <laughs> when you're kind, it could mean you're giving up what you wanna do to spend time with someone else. Wow, you are really good at this game. <laughs> There are a lot of ways to show kindness and a lot of people who need it. So the one thing to remember today is this, show kindness to everyone. You can make waves of kindness to the people around you, not just your friends and family, but everyone. And if you need help, ask God. When you put your trust in Jesus, God gives you the Holy Spirit to help you show kindness. And if you need some practice, you can always go to the beach. <laughs> if you can find one. Okay, so I go west uh, a bunch of miles. No, no, east a bunch of miles. Wait, no, maybe, maybe I'm upside down. <laughs>